An accumulator is a procedure that is called repeatedly with a single numeric argument and accumulates its arguments into a sum. Each time it is called, it returns the currently accumulated sum. So it's this procedure object that's a closure. It has a, 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 um, a variable contained within it that gets updated. Um, write a procedure make accumulator that generates accumulators, each maintain an independent sum. The input to make the accumulator should specify the initial value of the sum. So for example, we call make accumulator 5, and that produces a procedure that we like name A so we can hold on to it. We, we um, apply A to 10, the procedure adds 10 to its internal 5, and then returns 15. Now its internal state has been changed, so if we do that again, we get 25. So let's, let's draw what that would look like, and then we'll code it. All right, so this is exercise 3.1. Um, okay, so at the top level, there is going to be a binding to a thing called, so this is the global environment. There's going to be a binding to a procedure make accumulator. That's just the name that we gave to this accumulator procedure. And we don't know what it looks like yet, but we know that we're going to have something that looks like this at the top level. We do know the parameters of make accumulator, so it's going to have a single parameter. So we'll call it N. I guess the body of the procedure is a thing we don't know yet. And the frame pointer will point back to the global environment. Um, maybe that's as far as we can go um, until we write the body, because the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to say define A, make accumulator 5. And so we have to invoke this and see what it does before we could have the binding for A. So there will be a binding for A at the, at the um, top level as well. But I guess we do have to figure out what this procedure is before we can continue the drawing. Um, all right, so let's jump into the code. OK, that seems to work. OK. So make accumulator at some point is going to have a, a lambda and what it's going to do is it's going, to, and there has to be some variable that's closed over. So this isn't, okay, this isn't a, an opportunity for let. So we're going to let some be, um, let's start out with it being zero and we can fix it later. Oh, make accumulator takes a parameter too, doesn't it? Yes, make accumulator takes a parameter. So here we go. So make accumulator takes an initial value. And I suppose we don't actually need a let in here, do we? That's the, that initial value is the thing that there's going to be a frame for when it's called. So I think all we have to do is... Um, return a procedure that accepts a parameter and adds it to that, that value. So we're going to use a begin statement. Well, do it here. So all we have to do is set bang our closed over initial value to be the sum of its present value and the argument we were just given. And then we return the new initial value. I suppose that's a bad name now because it's a valuable that keeps getting it's a value that keeps getting updated. So we'll call it sum. So we're not getting confused. I think that's the story. Okay, so A is a, that procedure. 
and we could say a of 10 and that worked and a of 10 again. Okay, so should we draw out what's happening there when we do this? So the body of make accumulator, so actually its parameter is not going to be n, it's going to be the sum and it will be in, it gets initialized to some value and its body is the lambda of n. So that's what make accumulator is and now what's A? A is the result of the initial make accumulator of 5. So after just this line of code gets run, what we have is we evaluate this in a context where sum has been bound to 5. So we're basically we're going to evaluate make accumulator of 5. And in order for that to occur, a frame needs to be created where the parameter of the make accumulator function is bound to a concrete value, in this case 5. The frame pointer for this frame points up to um, the frame that this procedure, um, its, its environment chain. So this frame points up to here. And then in the context of this frame, we evaluate the body. So the body is, let's put the code back on the screen. The body is that lambda. So in the context of this frame, that body gets evaluated. So that creates a new lambda expression. Um, that lambda expression has the parameter n, and the body of this one is the begin statement. Its an environment pointer is the frame that in which it was created. And then this lambda is the thing that is returned by this expression. So A gets bound to this. Does anybody have any questions on that? So that, that's pretty much the story. Um, we're going to do this a couple more times, so we're not we're not like done talking about this basic concept. Um, for the assignment, I think I said you're supposed to make a drawing. Let's go back here. Draw the environment diagram that would result from evaluating three statements in the exercise. So this diagram that we have here is the result of we're at this point. We've done that. I guess it's more. Yeah. So, uh, sorry. We've done this. So after we say A of 10, um, so what actually happens there? Who wants to jump in and say what's going to happen? Okay, I'm jumping in. So we need um, we need a new en environment frame for um, for for uh, applying this procedure. So we need a new environment frame where this parameter gets bound to a concrete value. That frame points up to the frame of this procedure. So like this procedure is able to walk up that chain. This frame is able to walk up the whole thing. And in the context of this frame, the body um, uh, evaluates, so the begin statement. Um, so let's look back at the code. Um, 
Okay, so then the set bang happens and sum gets updated to 15. And then, uh, and then sum gets returned. So that sum gets returned up here and this produces the 15. And when this procedure finishes evaluating, this frame goes away. There's no need for it to exist. There's no way of accessing it anymore. It, like, it still exists in memory, and it doesn't get destroyed right away, but at some point, garbage collection comes in, and um, there's no, the, no one has a, a way of accessing that frame anymore, so it gets garbage collected. So that would be like after evaluating A of 10, and then we run A of 10 again. So pretty much another frame gets created where N gets bound to 10. That frame also links up here. We're following this pointer to see where it links up. Um, the begin statement gets evaluated in the context of this new frame. Sum gets updated to 25. And then that gets returned. And one day this frame will get garbage collected. So that's the end of that exercise. Any questions? Okay. Um, we're going to move on to the next one then. Oh, I have a quick question um, about when we um, reevaluate the, the frame with some being evaluated to 25, when we reset those definitions, does that create a new frame with some being set to 25, or does that just like literally reset the state? Yeah, Josh. So, when, I, so when you evaluate, when you um, when the set bang actually happens, like what what happens? This frame is it persists, um, and it actually goes and mo it modifies the value. I mean. Like, I'm drawing these 5, 15, 25 as if they lived inside the frame. Really, those are like objects outside, and then there's like a, you know, a pointer to them. And so, you know, a new object gets created, and then the pointer gets to that one. Is that sort of the question? Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. Do the next one.